Hi guys, so we're going to look today at essay number six, and this is just an overview of the essay. It's not the detailed TOK Today uh, video on this essay title that will be published later on. This is with Gareth, TOK mentor and guru, to give us his view on this essay. Let's go on to number six. Are we too quick to assume that the most recent evidence is inevitably the strongest discussed with reference to natural sciences and one other area of knowledge? So strongest, it's the thing that students are going to have to tackle immediately with this one is uh, what do we mean by strongest? And, uh, and, and maybe that's different in different areas of knowledge. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm, I'm struck by how we need to disentangle this from the question about fresh knowledge as well, um, exciting and fresh knowledge, because very there are equivalences between this and um, and number three, of course. Yeah, that notion of what what constitutes strong strong evidence is obviously going to have to be tackled. And to me. Again, it's another question which has got a yes or no answer, um, or potentially could have. It depends on where the evidence comes from and how strong the process of identifying that evidence was as well. I mean, and, and also it begs the question, are, are we often too quick to assume that the most recent evidence is is the strongest? Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to remember or think of uh, instances where that's been the case. Yeah, my my sort of initial gut feeling is is that in most areas of knowledge, new evidence is not, a, or the most recent evidence is not assumed to be the strongest because it hasn't been, um, you know, tested and retested and uh, you know peer reviewed, yeah, peer reviewed or in the arts, it hasn't risen to the point of sort of popularity and popular acclaim or whatever however we're going to judge strongest but the broad brush strokes says to me that the innovator is the one who's sort of stood on the outside shouting over here i've got this new idea over here and the group are like yeah, yeah we're all going this way the assumption that's in the question there is something mm. that students may want to challenge mm. that we 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 ever assume that the new the newest evidence is the strongest or the most recent evidence is the strongest. It also makes me think, I'm not sure how relevant this is, that oftentimes, particularly in the natural sciences, technology has developed to a point where we are able to access evidence that we were previously un, unable to access. I'm mm -hmm. um, thinking about subatomic particles, uh, you know, and the colliders in Switzerland and, and you know, um, the recent mission to orbit the sun to get, more evidence about the way in which solar activity affects weather on earth we couldn't have done that we couldn't have got that evidence um 10 years ago because we you know the technology wasn't up there um not no pun intended um you know the so as we develop new technology we 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 can access evidence phenomena that we couldn't before so there's just that's a, that's one kind of partial argument for the thesis that you know or not the thesis, but the fact that we, you know, the most recent evidence is is strong, oftentimes because it's new, you know. So possibly the role of technology. Mm -hmm. I suppose the question partly depends upon whether that most recent evidence corroborates existing evidence or whether it it, it undermines existing evidence and, and whether it corroborates the, the dominant paradigm or whether it, it confronts it and challenges it. We're less we're less likely to adopt um, or think that evidence is strong if it flies in the face of an existing well established paradigm or, or or worldview. Definitely. But having said that, if if it's kind of irrefutably the case that this evidence does disrupt existing mindset, and this brings me back to my my first point. I think is that it depends how that evidence is sourced. Uh, the process by which it's been gleaned, whether that's um, thorough, exhaustive, then it's going to be strong. So that comes back again to the idea of what do we mean by strong? And that's something that I think is unavoidable. Students will have to discuss what is strong knowledge and what is the, the criteria for, for deciding whether knowledge is strong or evidence is strong. 
and, and going back to custodians of knowledge, it also depends upon who has produced that evidence as well. Yeah. Right? If yeah. the most recent evidence comes from high status knowledge producers or from from outsiders yeah there's also the the idea of following the money you know uh, we we know all too often that the natural sciences um new discoveries are often determined by the amount of money that's put into discovering them um and then you know and we know that natural scientists are not not uh impervious to confirmation bias uh cognitive biases of many types but i think that thought actually is quite uh, pertinent to several of the other questions too. Just just going back to the wording, are we too quick to assume that the most mm. recent evidence is the strongest? So in there, there's an, there's an implication that being too quick to assume has some dangers to it. There are some negative outcomes from being quick to assume. And I wonder if that's confirmation bias. I wonder if it could be the file draw problem, for example, as well. Um, What's the file draw problem? File draw problem is where you know the the bulk of evidence indicates one thing, and then one piece of evidence indicates something else. And the bulk of evidence which indicates one thing get, just gets put in the file in the drawer because it's boring. We already know that. Whereas this one bit of evidence indicates something different. So that's the one which we sort of focus on and give lots of attention to. Uh, the classic example of this is the Murray-Hernstein bell curve in the 1980s in the US, which we use a lot in top today stuff. The administration used this education research as the platform for all of their education policy, even though it showed something that none of the other education research showed. Yeah, you you have to go into more detail another time, I think, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's very complicated. Well, it's always a problem trying to work out what evidence looks like in the arts. What is evidence? Is it the artist, the producer, or is it the knower, the audience? Um and, and of course, students can argue either way, but neither one is particularly easy to argue. Mm. You, you have to have both, I think. Yeah, yeah. Evidence yeah. of artistic. I think just, you know, intent is not enough. <laughs> and product is not necessarily enough. You have to have a knower or an audience as well. Um, well, and, and I wonder whether it's, whether evidence can just be replaced with the word knowledge, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and whether they've just not wanted to have knowledge twice in the same title, the word knowledge. But yeah, that's could be quite confusing. Um, well, well, no, I think it's intentional that the word evidence is there. Mm. Because if you think in, in the human and natural sciences, um, mm. evidence is data that can then be placed into a knowledge framework and it can form knowledge. But standing on its own, it isn't necessarily knowledge. Um, so the, so the, it comes back to specialisation and generalisation again, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah that, make, yeah, that makes sense. So are we, are we a bit guarded about um, promoting the idea of looking at the arts for this, for this question then? Ooh, I, I think though that the arts always provides a beautiful contrast to mm. the, the yeah. human and natural sciences. Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's a, the, the, there's also a strong case that the um, the art is is the art world is 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 biased towards the, the power of the avant garde. Mm. <laughs> Newest is often often thought of as best, you know, yeah. particularly if it turns over previous. I mean, the whole. Art evolves, 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 and all of a sudden, somewhere it'll just um, be a revolution, mm -hmm. you know, and there'll be a whole new area of art which which didn't exist before, or a way of approaching art, um, and, and and that can give the students a really nice um, counter claim or you know uh, counter argument to the the maths or science or uh, history argument. Um, so you know, you go back to the, the example you used of punk rock. Uh, that's a revolutionary moments and paradigm shift in 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 artistic in an artistic genre. It's a great it's a great example for this uh, as a counter example. So, thank you very much, Gareth, for my absolute pleasure, Daniel. Thank you. Yeah, 
your great insights. I know that I've learned um, I've learned a lot listening to you. I've, I've got lots of new ideas that you've brought to to my way of thinking about these titles, and that that's the reason for these, the purpose for these videos. That's um, good. Thank you. Um, it makes me want to be back as a uh, full time TOK teacher. Yeah, miss it. So it's been a great opportunity to to do what we always used to do so much. Okay, there we have it. Essay number six, Garrett's wisdom and thinking on that essay. If you found that useful and hit like, I found it useful. And if you're writing essay number six, then hit subscribe. Or if you want any more TOK content, hit subscribe so that you get notifications when I upload more content about the May 24 essays. If you want free essay notes for download, then head over to toktoday.com where we have um, free downloads for you over there. Stay top-tastic, my friends. Bye.